it's it's more than just EVs too that will change as the market changes. It'll be less fuel for things that need fuel. So I just hope I can still have my motorcycle, and I know the car people out there are going to still want to run their old cars for yeah. sure. I like to fish, and I don't see any electric boats yet, but. Just because you see the countdown. Hey, everybody. I got to start it out right this time because last episode I noticed I didn't say welcome to the Make Trades Great Again podcast right away. I know I say that every single time and everybody is already listening to the podcast, but I'd like to welcome them. And I'd also welcome our our guest, Andy, our very special, nice, handsome, smart, tall, all these things. He is Jason Norman, or he goes by HVAC J on the gram. J. Good morning, guys. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. How are you guys yeah. doing? I'm doing good. I'm, I'm, I'm doing well. I'm, I'm a little tired this morning. I don't know. I'm a little I'm, laggy, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to defer to you to get us started. We, we had recently talked about EV vehicles, specifically cargo vans, for the use of like service yeah. fleets. And Andy and I are... I, I can I can speak for Andy in this case. We're fascinated by this whole idea, and Denver kind of spe- you know um, spurred this conversation. Denver Baker, uh, MD Heat, and it's got us thinking like a hundred different ways since Sunday about how the heck this might or might not work. I'm convinced it would work. Um, I think that there's a lot of opportunity. But you sent Andy an email. You sh- shared a whole bunch of cool information i'm gonna hand it over to you because i want you to kind of get started and give everybody listening and watching an idea about what it was you were talking about your email yeah so i sent a long-winded email to a very long-winded email address um Um, the make trades great again pod uh at gmail.com that's the one there you go um yeah i don't know there's um it really intrigued me hearing you guys talk about ev vehicles and stuff like that um where i live I don't know, it, it, it doesn't work really well, in my opinion. I've gone on some trips on an EV vehicle where we did, uh, well, actually, we need to stop. Hold on a second here. We need to figure out some terms here because I'm kilometers and you guys are miles. <laughs> That's okay. So, <laughs> That's okay. K's and M's. So there's, what, there's 160 kilometers and 100 miles, something like that. So I drove in an EV yeah. vehicle last summer. We did a trip with the boys up to Kelowna that was like 260 kilometers I'm sure um, we can do the math on that one, but uh, 260. You said, yeah. I'm looking it up right now. It's 161 and a half miles. So that's that's also um, through mountains and stuff like that too. So that's obviously gonna you're not gonna have the full range of it. We had to stop for charging, I think three times or whatever, and that was fine. It was actually a fun little trip, very different from what I'm used to, where you just fuel up at home and you just ride straight there. And I think that's the biggest change with EV is that we're going to have to change our driving habits like 100%. I think you're right. Uh, that's changing all the time, not daily or anything like that, but yeah. uh, more charging stations are coming online all the time. I mean, it's a fact. And uh, so far I'd like to, and I'd like to start the conversation out too, real quick. I would like to remind everybody, we're not talking about, um, we're not pushing any kind of agenda here. What, what, no. whatsoever. We're literally talking about this because it's an interesting, um, conversation. It's going to affect every one of us in a real way at some point in time. Right. So, well, and, and at the moment are, you know, I mean, Jay, you, you're, you guys are getting, would you say 2020 or 2035 is your no new vehicles date? Yeah, I mean, that's not far away. No, it's really not. Right. <laughs> you know, it's one vehicle. You look at the longevity of that. It's one vehicle if life cycle one, away. Yeah, it's kind of one life yeah. cycle away. Yeah. yeah, that's what I was just gonna. Yeah, I was just gonna say. I, I, I was looking at a, a chart earlier that was saying that the average lifespan of a vehicle is twelve years. Yeah, that was one of the things I put in the email. There is that, like for Canada, they're kind of federally mandating across all the provinces that come twenty thirty five, there'll be no more new vehicle sales that are strictly like combustion engine it'll have to be electric vehicle um or hydrogen or i believe even um hybrid qualifies so long as the hybrid electrical part of it is over like 80 kilometers or 100 kilometer range or something like that as it be the benchmark for the minimum yeah the the minimum standard yeah is that is that specifically spell out or does it 
it does it at all um, indicate whether it's commercial or um, you know domestic pro- you know like personal use vehicles well I was doing some investigative journalism vehicles? last night and I was looking nice. for that answer <laughs> I couldn't nice. specifically find that answer it did talk about like I did find some verbiage that leads me to believe that it may not include like all vehicles so like big trucks and stuff like that and commercial vehicles but like where do they draw the line of commercial vehicles like we are all used to driving three-quarter ton vans right is that going to be considered a commercial vehicle at that point because there's definitely non-commercial non-commercial like builds for those vehicles that you could consider would be for personal use right I sure as hell hope it does though, because in the state of Minnesota, I'm licensed and I have to follow like specific rules that I wouldn't because I'm a yeah. commercial vehicle. My name is on the side of it. I'm driving it for a business purpose. Mm-hmm. If I tow a trailer and my, immediately my vehicle GVW goes over ten thousand pounds, I have to go through way stations and everything like that, like immediately, just because I'm driving it with for my business. So they should at least follow like the same kind of guidelines i would imagine yeah i would imagine i'm not sure exactly where they draw the line but like i imagine inevitably wherever they draw the line today it'll be different tomorrow so i totally (laughs) no like seriously like i i foresee myself driving a service van that's probably going to be an ev within before i retire anyway you know it's it's interesting though You, you look at that and you say well what what kind of industries would have you know like significant impact if you said all vehicles right all commercial vehicles you look at somebody like an electric utility or something of that nature that has you know a hundred bucket trucks you know big bucket trucks on the road and you go well how do they I mean granted they're gonna they're the utility they show up to go to work and just plug into a pole somewhere. You know, I mean, whatever, but you know, it's, it'd be like, uh, be like in India where the guy's got the piece of rebar and he's like bending wires around the, the prongs to get his power, you know, he's using a fork. I like the or one where they use two yeah. pieces of silverware and wire. Yeah. No, uh, no, it's interesting. Jay, in your email, you had, you had, and you started the conversation about like you went on this trip and you know, you had to stop along the way, uh, in your email, you said, you know, it's a pretty, I think it's a pretty solid point to make. Like we're going to, are we going to have to, or we're probably going to have to change our driving habits. Right. For sure. What does that mean? Like when it comes to a fleet, because I've, I've said in conversation with you and, and Andy and in their past episode, like there's going to be a point at which like companies are going to have to figure it out. You're going to either have to have yeah. the space at your own property to do like depot charging. When I say depot, that's what the industry apparently uses that term. Or you can, you know, you build a bank of chargers. That's depot charging, I guess. So I'm just going to call it that. Mm-hmm. Um, or like I said, I could drop a bomb in this episode right now and tell everybody listening that there's a huge opportunity for anybody that's willing to put your neck on the line. Go buy a piece of property right now as close to the center of your town as you possibly can get. Run the power, build your own depot charging thing and make it a subscription, you know, a membership, you yeah. know. Put a roof over the top so those plumbing and HVAC and electrical vans don't have snow sitting on their ladder racks. Like, there's a huge opportunity to do that. And and to address your question, are we going to have to change our habits? Yeah, absolutely. We're going to have to change. And we we probably don't even know how much that's going to have to change. At right. least if we go the, the same route we're going now with just battery-powered EV vehicles. Like, we know they got to be charged. They're going to get better, obviously, but, like, at what point and for, you know, how long do we have to wait until we're there? You know? Well, I have a three quarter ton high roof sprinter and it's full of shelving, full of tools, full of refrigerant cylinders. I wouldn't say I'm heavy with how much stuff I have, but I'm right, right up there. And I can achieve over 300 miles easily per tank of diesel. Right. So like, that's kind of like a once a week fill up for me. Um, running calls in town sometimes i might need to do like maybe 80 miles in a day would be like a long day like return trip home right okay but but you're parking are you you're not parking at your your house are you i am see that's that's the difference that we need to figure out like there's depot charging which might be great for if you return the vehicle to your employer or if you're like a delivery type service 
or whatever, but like a lot of us in my area will all take our vehicles home. So how are we going to charge at home? Um, I live near a major, I would consider it like a large suburbia, but um, there's mostly strata. So it's townhouses and condos. So uh, townhouses where I live, there's no driveways. So it's not like I can park it, my overheight vehicle on a driveway and not in my carport like there's no driveway to park it in or if you live in a condo it's all underground parking so some of the downtown technicians might have specific vehicles that they can park in parking garages in which case it could probably charge at their strata but it yeah, doesn't but work the, for my application those exist right now as you're saying so it doesn't matter if it's a they're driving a gas diesel or electric if the vehicle's too large and there's no place to park it, there's no place to park it. It doesn't matter what yeah. Correct. is power in the vehicle at all, like literally. Mm -hmm. So then I wonder how that, like, you, you know, going back to are we going to have to change things? Look, I think that there's also, I know this sounds like I'm so pro EV. I'm not trying to sound that way. I, I don't mean that when I say this. I think we have gotten so used to, uh, technicians driving and parking at home. Maybe that yeah. just has to change. Like, I'm not saying it's okay. I'm just saying in general, maybe that's over when we start having to plug vehicles in because of all the reasons right. we talked about in the last episode, you talk about it now, Jason, like Andy, all of your guys park their vehicles at home in yeah. two of the three live in like yeah. you yeah, know like uh, a complex. Yeah, complex. Right the complex they don't yeah. yeah they don't have the opportunity at least currently to charge at least they can park though so they right. have a slot you know they have a stall in a parking lot i would imagine yeah. as this comes online can you imagine what it's gonna how much it's gonna take to incentivize <laughs> rental property owners to put in chargers EV, though EV like charger. think about that think yeah. about that we well, can barely I mean, get them to upgrade their water heater <laughs> right that's it and that's <laughs> Yeah, that's that's a I mean a huge part of it. You look at all the all the townhouses and uh, duplexes and triplexes that are around. I mean, every city's full of them. You know that are yeah. that are you know multifamily rental properties that are eh, maybe a little on the the level of they might be a little bit rundown, right? Older properties. They probably yeah, are running on a, a two hundred. They're building them every retirement. day though. They're building right, them but, every day here though. It's crazy. Oh, well, they are. If you, and and if you're going to do same, depot. But, if you're going to do depot charging, though, like, I think you have the same problem at most most business models for, like, our industry. Like, for instance, my employer, we have about 20 trucks on the road. Um, we have a little shop with a warehouse and an office space built out. There's probably eight parking stalls. So, like, where are the other 16 vehicles that we have in the fleet going to park at night if we do make a mandate that everyone has to return to base, you know? Yeah. So Planning starts now, then. I think so, yeah. But like you know, all that's going to cost money, and is and it's going to increase oh, yeah. the cost of our tickets as well too. It's interesting to see what what's going to change. But I don't I don't think that the solution is going to be like return to base at the end of the day, and everyone's going to drive their trucks back to Andy's house, and his wife won't be able to get out of her garage and stuff like that, right? I think there's right. <laughs> there's other opportunities where I believe there's already happening, and I don't know about your guys's area, but like where I live, there's um. A lot of the gas stations are starting to turn over to have um, EV charging stations where you used to park to go into the convenience store. Uh, there's EV charging stations there now. And um, from my little experience on our road trip we did in the summer, like they're pretty, there's some definitely better ones, some better than others, that's for sure, in terms of how much power they can output and how quickly you can charge your battery. Um, yeah, it'll DC. be interesting to see how, I don't know how much more technology can change to ram that much power into a battery that quickly with without it being unsafe but right. we'll see there's only a small portion of vehicles in that i see driving around that are strictly ev currently but if you were to mandate that they're all electric vehicles things would go off the rails pretty quick where i live i mean even just getting out of town and going out to the mountains for the weekend and you have gas you stop at that last gas station before you hit the mountains on the weekend, especially a long weekend in the summertime. You're waiting 20 minutes to get fuel, never mind to... And it only takes, what, two to two to five minutes to fill up your tank as opposed to an EV charging 30. station where if you wanted to get 80% charge rate on a decent charger, you might be there for 30, 40 minutes, right? 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's no doubt about that. It's gonna people are are gonna use that too as an argument against it. Um, yeah, I don't love the idea at all. I don't. My motivation of going, and I said it before, so I won't spend a lot of time on it, is just to not stop at the gas station, right? But if you look at these ratings, and if they if they hold true for even like seventy five percent, let's say you lose twenty five percent capacity because of we're loading these things down pretty well, these vans, and also cold weather. Let's say you lose twenty five percent off the top, and that e sprinter, you're still looking at like two hundred and twenty miles to a to a charge. That's that's days worth of driving in most cases. It just yes. is, yeah, and. You know, somebody will get you. Oh, I drive 400 miles. I'm like, well, then you don't get paid to do anything but drive, apparently, <laughs> because that's like the worst business model ever, you know? Um, so, yeah, you know, are people going to like to wait for it? I don't know. I think you brought up a good point in your email, too, is like, how how is it going to be when you show up to a, a station? Let's say they're let's say they continue to look and operate like a gas station that, like we're used to where you can wait just a few minutes and that's already aggravating to get to a pump. Like, how are you going to feel when you're waiting as you see the person just plugging in their vehicle? Right. And you're like, that's the, that's the one you got to wait for. That's the one I got in line for. Now I got to wait. Like, I don't know if that's going to be the case. Like you said, if you can do it safely, can they speed up the charging? These DC fast chargers, that level three charger, those things, you know, they're already charging certain vehicles, depending on their platform, in like 20 minutes, 20 to yep. 30. Um, I don't know that, like, these vans have basically kind of the same battery system. It doesn't, they might be physically larger, but I don't know that they could take charge any fast. Probably worse, actually. They're probably not even as good. <laughs> well, and, and I was just looking at something. So, uh, because I was just I was thinking that same thing, like, well, how does that work like overnight on like the 110 volt charger? You know, does that does that do it? You know, can you charge up? And it says that um, this this article from who the heck is it? NRDC. Not sure who that is. Um, mentioned that a level one charger, so 110 volt plugs into a 20 amp outlet, says that a, a typical EV battery or car system would take between 40 and 50 hours to charge from empty to full Jesus. on a level one. 40 uh, 50 hours? Yep. So, so it's, it's totally worthless at that point. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, if but if, you know, the same on the same token, it says the U.S. car driver averages 31 miles a day. So if you can go 250, then you're topping off, right? You, you show up, you come home from work, you park the car, you plug in, and you need to make up 25%. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, so that's going to be whatever, 25%. So, t you know, 10 hours, let's say. So by well, morning, it's charged up. I've had guys that had to call in because it's a snow day. And like, you know what? There's just too much snow. Um, I'm out. I got to call in sick today. I can't get out of my driveway. So maybe we got to call in like a charge day. So I'm yeah. like, I call up Andy. Hey, sorry, Andy. Right. I can't make it to the job today. It's Wednesday morning. Um, yep. Truck's not charged yet. I'll see you tomorrow. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so, there's a lot of there's a lot that's going to come from that. Like if you're having to top off every single day, that means that you're on top of it. What happens if you're not? Yep. Well, so then Or you're on call. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you go to the level 2 charger. So two the, the, and I don't know what there may be other different uh, categories and whatnot inside well, of these. Well, it's one but, two. Yeah, basically the two one, is two, the three. professionally installed 240 yeah. volt. Yeah. 240 volt. Yep. Yeah. So this is uh 240 volt um should charge from empty in somewhere between four to 10 hours. Um, public level two charging stations are common at locations where drivers need to park like workplaces, commercial parking lots. Um, and then you have fat high speeds, uh, the level three chargers that are DCFS or DCFC chargers, direct current fast chargers um, can charge your EV from empty um, to 80% in as little as 20 minutes. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, that, there's, so there's options. I mean, that that would be, it would be a massive pain in the butt. And I think we can all agree on that, that if you're out running service calls or, you know what, I got eight trips to the supply house today because we're, we're deep in it 
and you know this commercial building's down and i got to keep running for parts that would suck to be able to to get somewhere halfway through the day or whatever and be like i I guess i'm sitting here for 40 minutes or 25 minutes while we top off the van well but see the thing is is i think that we just don't think of this at all when we're talking about gas because we're so used to just having to go to the pump fill it up diesel gasoline doesn't matter right like that just it's so automatic it's just gonna be more frequent we're, we're, we we want to talk about how range anxiety and how this could be inconvenient and how it might have to call in. Like, look, these vehicles aren't running 24 hours a day. And everybody right. we know in this industry, unless I've unless there's some crazy business model out there that I haven't heard of. But if you are plumbing, a heating, you know, whatever, all these contractors that are driving the vehicles we're talking about, they're not handing the keys to the next person working a second shift. Right. Sure. They're literally parking these things every day. So I think that the range thing has to, I think the qualification for range has to meet your daily demand. I really do think that that's it. I don't think that charging it every day is like, oh my God, I can't believe you have to charge it every day. Well, like, I don't know. You probably charge your cell phone literally every single day. Unless you're multiple uh, times. (laughs) Unless you're completely psychotic serial killer that like, waits till it's at one percent and then plugs it in i don't want to know you i don't want to know that about you but like your vehicle is not running 24 hours a day so this this whole i'm gonna run out in the middle of it comes down to like personal responsibility too like and then also let's not forget the telematics that are we use that term because ford put it out there i think but like like these systems are always connected whether you're yeah. driving down the road or not, your vehicle is right now, whether you have access to it or not. They know exactly everything about your vehicle. Like OnStar has been around yeah. forever to tell you when you need an oil change. You think that every vehicle out there, if you bought it within the last 10 years, can't do that? It, of course it can. You know, yeah. so like you you start making these electric and it just comes down to like we're you know, like you talked, Jay, and we bring it up. I bring it up the 10th time already. I'm sorry. But like change your habits. That's what I'm talking about. You're just going to have to like. Yeah. Now we're going to have to start thinking again. You know, like we're going to be like. If there's one thing, <laughs> if there's one thing in my life that I've learned is the general populace doesn't really think all that. No, greatly, you're 100 percent. That's why I'm harping on it right now. That's, I know. It's, so no, here's it's here's true. a quick story. So two two falls ago, like we had a early November snowfall. So like where I live, I live like north of Seattle in Vancouver. So like not really cold. Cold weather isn't typical. Lots of snow isn't typical. But we had this like flash freeze in November. We had snow and it was like minus five Celsius. So like yeah. high twenties, I yeah. guess, right? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and. Uh, Oh my gosh, the world ended. It, I long. St- I was on. No, I'm serious. I'm serious. I was on call. I started at three o'clock downtown, and then it was like noon. I'm like, you know what? I'm still on call. I need to go. I phone the office. I'm like, I'm going to sleep. I'm going home. And it just started snowing at noon, one o'clock in the afternoon. And by the rush hour to go home, roads were shut. So I have a huge river, the Fraser River, that runs through all the Fraser Valley and the lower mainland where all the towns are. So like there's bridges everywhere, but all the bridges were closed because of spun out vehicles was the first problem because everyone's like, Oh my gosh, there's snow in BC in November. I don't have snow tires a to begin with, or B if I do, they're not on my vehicle yet. So nobody could travel on the roads was the first problem. But then the second problem was it was compounded because all the EV drivers who are used to their typical driving habits, Eric, where it's like, hey, it's like 30 miles to my door, home, return return trip. Yeah, now they're Well, stuck. guess what? It's minus... Yeah, they, they they had no power. There was dead EVs everywhere. They were, 911 was plugged because people didn't even have, like, who are diabetics, didn't have insulin, and they're stuck in traffic for so long. It took a lot of my guys I work with um, over 10 hours to get home that day, which a typical rush hour bad day with an accident might have been like an hour and a half. People... 
were losing their mind. Right. They weren't home till the following day. And it I, was nuts. And, and admittedly, I wasn't even thinking in those scenarios. Don't get me wrong. I also, yeah. in my defense, if if I care to even try to claim one, <laughs> is that where I live, that doesn't happen, Jay. Like if it yeah, snows, it's unique it's, to me for sure. We're prepared for it, right? So like, yeah. it's it's less of a concern for me. Although it is like it's going to add on to the commute. Oh, There's yeah. no doubt about that. I mean, I'm not an idiot. I'm not going to yeah. deny that a snowstorm sudden and out of kind of season. Although November wouldn't be out of season for us, but like prior to no. let's say prior to Halloween, if that happens yeah. in Minnesota, it's going to ruin everybody's day and commute. But it's not going to take 10 hours. No, no freaking way. It's not even clo- I mean, no, I can't even think of a scenario in my lifetime that that would have even been close to the situation here in yeah. Minnesota. But well, I, you're right. It's we, a reality. We had one here two weeks ago that the uh, portion of the interstate was closed for like four and a half hours because a whole uh, kind of a freak snowstorm coming out of Bozeman, and they weren't ready to plow the roads. Now, granted, this doesn't have anything to do with EVs specifically, but think think along that line, if you're in your, in your gas-powered vehicle and you're just sitting there idling to keep your vehicle warm, and what the, the reasoning was is there was like 14 semi-trucks that got stuck on the pass. Yeah. Right? They spun out, lost traction, and there they are. They're just basically sitting in the middle of the road. And everyone yeah. behind it now can't move. Until the road's cleared or they're towed over into the clear that, you know, the driving lane. And so well, it basically plugged the uh, interstate up there. And I, and I think of that and go, well, how does an EV maintain heat? Well, with an electric heater, you know, I mean, what, what do you do in that scenario? I mean, there's places in, in Montana where you're a hundred miles between fuel stops, you know, or, or pushing on it. I mean, that's not the norm. I mean, but Canada's this, this very similar position. You get up there in, in the in the North Country, and I mean, you, I don't know. I, I just you're right though. It is it is a as a habit change that you ha- you can't go. Well, hey, I'm going to go take this road trip and expect to be there in eight hours if I've got to stop three times to charge. Yeah, you know, I, and I don't know if it's, it's like, you know, I'm not going to put, like, the government controlling us on what we can and cannot do on this whole no topic. More some people, no, I know some people want to go there, though. They do. I've had yeah. that conversation very recently. Yeah. Um, but I'll pose another scenario in regards to the l- road closure on the pass and the 100 miles between towns. And let's say those both those towns have ample opportunity to charge. Let's just say they do, yeah. but there's nothing in between. Look, I'm not taking my my existing transit off road because I it's not an off road vehicle. Right. I'm not taking my Tesla Model Three I'm renting in Utah next week off road <laughs> because it's not an off road vehicle. Maybe right. we have to then now have to sit back and go, what vehicles are do belong where? Do we take the electric vehicle? to that very remote place where something like this could happen? Or do we have to say, no, that's a spot that only, you know, you combustion engine cars vehicles. Can yeah. Yep. You know, look, it goes back Andy to how do we the- change, like, how we look at all this. It, we're not talking yep. about those things or we're not thinking about those things because we've never had to before. Yeah. Andy had a good one that I didn't really think of that made me go, uh-huh, on the last one you guys talked about where it's like maybe when you go to the customer's house – whether it be a business or a residential house, it's like, hey, I'm going to plug in here and, you know, we're going to track what it costs yep. per kilowatt you and I'm going to pay back either equal or maybe yep. whatever. you. There's like a, I'm going to give you 20 bucks plus whatever um, energy I yep. use, right? That's here's, a good solution my, to that problem too because yep. you're parked there for a boiler repair right. or whatever it might be, yeah, right? right. And, 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 and I, I, I had somebody uh, write in that was all fired up about that and, and I appreciate them uh, writing in. But I, I looked at that and I went, well, that would be really easy to do, right? You know, to, to, to it, yeah. somebody's going to come up with an app. Oh, it already exists. And, and, a, and a metering device where you could plug in and be like, hey, I'm going to run my clock. I'm at Mrs. Jones. Fully Mrs. Jones, here I am. Well, uh, but it, 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 it doesn't exist in the vehicle in, the, in terms of billing. And so right. that right. you would have to be able uh, yeah. to, to – 
you know, yes, you can say, okay, hey, between these hours, I, I took on this many uh, kilowatts of power. And, but you could go in and say, okay, here it is. Um, you know, our charge rate is, you know, our standard charge, you know, what we pay back rate is, you know, 10 cents a kilowatt, you know, thanks for the, thanks for the huff up, you know, whatever. And, uh, got me topped off and I'm on to the next call. So, but it, it, if you look at that, all this is it, it's software though. You know what I mean? It, it, absolutely. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. It's, but somebody will have an app that, that every homeowner will have that you'll be like, Oh, Hey, I plugged in and now the company's going to Venmo you 11 bucks. Yeah. Or, or and it's $6 gonna be treated or just like mileage reimbursement or yeah. right. And I think they'll yeah, just treat comes it off just the like bill. mileage reimbursement or would it be like a going rate, you sure. know, you know, like yeah. in, in the U S J like if you're an employee and you're driving for your, you know, company for whatever, and you get reimbursed for mileage, there's just a standard federal rate, right? It's right. You know, it's yeah. expensive for the employer technically, but it's way cheaper than paying for a vehicle, right? So, like, it's just going to go that route. It's got to. And the beauty of that is it's software. So, like, Andy, like you said, like, it's not in the billing side of it. It's just probably a matter of, like. It's, it's a matter of doing it. Yeah. Why are framing that into that? So, it's yeah. just part of it, you know? And, right. And is it feasible? Like, you can make the argument, well, you can't just plug into it. I'm like, I, you know what? Yeah, you well, this might have to be the <laughs> way things are done for a while. Right. Until we figure this out. It's part of the terms, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it's part of yeah. your terms for the work that you're doing. Like we, like we will be permitted to plug in at a level two rate if if it's available or sure. whatever it might be. And I mean, there's a lot of homes that don't have that. But I mean, again, we're not talking about needing that technology installed tomorrow. Yeah. We have a whole vehicle life cycle before yeah. that becomes a reality. So that's a whole decade Look, plus there's so much to change business. people's driving habits to get the technology installed, yeah. to have the software to figure it yeah, all there's out, so right? much well, business opportunity here too though think about these huge. neighborhoods that have yeah. like these neighborhoods these planned communities that are you know every fourth house is the same and they all have they have a pool and they have their little park and it's all within their you don't even have to gate these things off some of them are gated but mm -hmm. a lot of you could drive around all of north america and in some in every state you can find these communities they're being built yeah. they, they're no more than 20 years old as it is anyway right yeah what if instead of putting a pool in or a park or in addition to, they start putting up charging depots in these in these neighborhoods that are within a couple blocks of every the, one of the houses anyway. That's just another incentive for you know for uh, for people to make money and selling homes, building neighborhoods, communities, things like that. Like I brought up the depot. Like go to your town, buy a, Andy. Maybe you and I need to do this. Like seriously. <laughs> Roof over the top, pavilion style, yeah. Car car wash that'll take on vans right over there. Now we're yeah. selling car washes at thirty five bucks a pop. Just drive through. We'll wash your yeah. plumbing Go van. Go pick your car up. Yep. <laughs> well, yeah, we'll do it while it's charging. You're like, we'll let we'll 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 find the right <laughs> time to do it. It's going to be on the list. Then we'll plug it back in, and you'll charge. You'll be charged when you show up and washed and washed and no snow wash. over the top of it. Look, there's all kinds of opportunities here for this yep. what if you have a, a you know what if your complex also offers tire replacements yeah and vehicle maintenance and you know i'm thinking well like seriously what if what if what if there's a way like we are we're all used to using batteries in our daily oh. like tasks as tradespeople, but like what if there is a way that i could slide out like a five kilowatt battery make a off the side of my vehicle or maybe a machine does it for me yeah where maybe maybe that doesn't work because there's different brands of vehicles but maybe there's like an ability to add like a universal yeah. uh modular battery bank and it's just part of your shelving where it's in the side and you can slide in and out maybe five kilowatt battery banks and it's like a gas station you just pull out one from the rental service or the leasing company and you put in a freshly charged one and then it instantly yep. starts charging and for the next one. And again, on an app, you can see in town where there's some modules to swing by and you can reserve them to come pick them up and you're in and out in the yep. same amount of time it takes you to pump gas that's, or that's diesel. That's easily the most interesting concept that has been brought up in all of these conversations I've had about this subject. Have, you brought up in your email, Jay. I think yeah, it's yeah. a fascinating idea. Have you guys seen that? I love um, it. There's a, a, I don't know what country it is. I don't know if it's China or Thailand or something like that, but they're, they're taxi cabs or EVs and they have a, 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 a battery swap. So you basically drive the taxi cab up onto this little ramp 
it the machine comes up pops the battery out the bottom slides it over and snaps a new one in the bottom and off they go and they got a fresh battery so the taxi cab doesn't have to stop and i'm yeah. like that's and that's exactly so that's, what you're talking about today, yeah. right where we're like yeah. you go to your brand yeah. of station that does this and you just pay a, like a flat fee for it yes yeah. Yeah, and that that also allows like the integration of solar PV to like offset the Hugely. you know the Hugely. char you know like because these things you have a warehouse full of them basically at that point right right and you're charging every one of the can you imagine the heat that the cooling they would need for that warehouse Jay like think about that like there's business here man it's a, it's a massive <laughs> but the uh, but well, then, you, can, you know you can build it into like city generation stations where they're they're taking that heat and they're yeah. using it for a process right district like, we have. Like it's, yeah, district heating. There you go. Absolutely. Exactly, right? Yeah, there's just a lot here. I think it's fascinating. Like I said, I know it sounds like I'm super pro. I'm like pro electric van for like just super selfish reasons. But I think that there's a, I think we're just, we're barely even scratching the surface in our like lay term, you know, conversations about like, oh, what if this, what if that, like, <laughs> you know, I I'd, I'd really love to talk with somebody that is in this industry too. And I'd really like to talk to somebody to help me figure out how to build one of these uh depot charging station things. <laughs> so I think that's going to be my legacy. <laughs> I'm going to leave my kids this business and be like, "Here you go." <laughs> yeah. Ani plumbing, heating and yeah, EV right, charging. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Oh, that'd be cool. Well, what else? Cool. What do you think? I mean, I'm already spoiled. Like my my work vehicle, um, it's what it's twenty thousand kilometers between services, so I only need to take it in once a year. But it's that all has a cost to it. But like the best part about a truly EV without hybrid is just the fact that um, uh, well, your maintenance intervals are extended, and the cost for maintenance is is reduced yeah. as well, right? Yeah, you're there's not a lot of maintenance to be done on electric motors there's not really anything you can do to them you know you're going to have your standard wear parts which apparently are reportedly higher rate of replacement for like tires but is that come down to driving habits too like people people now can go zero to 60 in like three seconds in some of these vehicles (laughs) like and so they do well that doesn't mean the tires are going to like perform and, and hold up to the same rate as they were with a lower performance vehicle either you know right and he's going to have the app the admin version of the app on his phone and he's going to be reducing the acceleration yeah. rate and stuff like that and top speeds like i mean 30 30 that too i'm sure max right? boys oh, sorry we got to save some kws that's right that's right it's, it's nope, interesting nope. at the very least Go ahead, Andy. I was going to say no four barrel carbs anymore. <laughs> oh god. Well, maybe, maybe these well, vehicles we haven't even really got into it because we don't have real true experience with it. But maybe these vehicles will have less uh, on the lines of the maintenance, but just their longevity and parts and stuff. Like, look, there's yeah. like barely a tra- like the transmission doesn't exist in the same way that it does now with these vehicles, right? Sure. And you know, hydrostatic drives and stuff like that. Like, like these vehicles, there's a lot of moving pieces. They are very reliable. Like, look, that I you don't hear of many transit and sprinter owners that are like, oh, we can only get twenty thousand miles or fifty thousand. I mean, these things last the, basically the same as any passenger vehicle, right? They go. Yeah. But um, you're starting to eliminate some of that stuff with these electric vehicles too. So. It's interesting. Yeah. I'd be interested to see how they start to change feature options, to be honest with you. You look at that. Um, what's the uh, – I'm going to pull up. I'm going to screen share real quick. Uh, that PDF we used in the last one, Andy, the um, the the comparison oh. of the models that, are, that uh, Sprinter had on their – uh, website and so it compares that the two models of the e sprinter to the ford e transit the bright yep. drop there's two models of that bright drop that bright drop is a gm vehicle jason and it's um it's like yeah. a giant futuristic bread truck it's actually in my opinion kind it's of cool looking 
it's kind of cool looking personally that's my thought and then you've got the rivian which is i don't know uh it's probably the same there with amazon but amazon has bought like a boatload of these rivian uh electric vans here in in north america or in united states sorry i'm sure it's that way in canada too but um more and more of the vehicles we see at least in the city center are these rivians and they're huge as well just giant giant um vans but like they have some pretty like for the first time you saw in these like these style vans the sprinter style van like they have a roll-up door on the back or they have um that's cool like a different automatic setting on their their um their side doors and stuff like that and they're like lower to the ground so you right. give up like ground clearance but now you've got like ergonomics like better to get in and out of and stuff like that so like i think this is spurring like redesign and like paying closer attention to how, like how the vehicles use and making it more efficient because yeah. with the transit and the sprinter all they did is they took the engine out and put batteries in it like <laughs> let's be honest is the vehicle's not any different yeah you know right if we can get 250 miles like of usable range i think we're laughing you know what i mean like we're well into the into the yep. good on that one, right? All those numbers up there, they're all 270s, 280s, and those are the fancy numbers they put on the sheet of cell, yep. the cell sheet or whatever, right? But, like, if we can get 200, 250 miles on a charge, like, I think we're laughing. So even if you say, well, Andy only wants his guys to charge to 90% or 80% to save battery life, too, I mean, you're still in the, like, what, 175 yeah. to 200 so mile range if your battery's capable of 250? Days. Like, that's... Yeah. Yep. Beautiful. Yeah. Yep. Beautiful. Multiple days, most likely, especially yeah. if you're working within the, you know, the city limits, let's, mm -hmm. let's call it in most major metropolitan areas. That's Twin Cities Metro. If you had 170, 180 uh, mile range in a normal service environment where you're doing residential, commercial service, plumbing, HVAC, electrical, if you're driving 100 miles in a day, it's because your boss allows you to park at home and you live in a rural area. Put it that way. I'm just going to lay that. That's sure. the line in the sand I'm going to draw. You don't need 100 <laughs> miles in a day. You just don't. Uh, unless your business is structured otherwise. But they could, even if you even if you drive that much now, like I said, it's probably because you park it at home and your home is 30 miles away. Well, that's 60 miles in a day just driving to the city in your house, right? Yeah. So habit change. We're going to run things differently. It's just a fact. I'm not saying it's good or bad. It's easy for me to say, I'm going to park the damn thing in my shop every day. I don't care. Yeah. I'm driving to my house and parking it here. I can plug it in if I need to. Yep. So are we going to go to like Mad Max era one day because, you know, the market, no, no, see, hold on, hear me out. Like the market's going to dictate and consumer habits are going to change to EVs, whether I think we want that right. to happen or not. That's what's going to happen, right? So what about your old cars? And when I say old cars, you know, maybe your 2000 Ford Explorer or whatever it might be, but like, you know, all the muscle car people out there, um, what are you going to do to run your vehicle? Well, you know, I, I'm a motorcycle guy. I love my motorcycle. You can give me an EV motorcycle. I think that'd be really cool. But I want to crank the throttle when I'm, when I got the clutch in, I want to hear it go vroom, yeah, vroom. Yeah. You know what I mean? You could. So like, it, it'll be interesting to see as we get rid of like gas stations and then EV stations come on board. Like, what are we going to do for fuel for like yeah. older vehicles that still exist or even like electric Vintage. vehicles or yep. for hobby enthusiasts who have generators or whatever it might be. It's it's more than just EVs, too, that will change as the market changes. It'll be less fuel for things that need fuel. So I just hope I can still have my motorcycle, and I know the car people out there are going to still want to run their old cars for yeah, sure. I, I like to fish, and I don't see any electric boats yet, but we'll see. Yeah. Well, they got yeah. They've had smaller, smaller little uh, fractional yeah. horsepower yeah. guys out there. Yeah, for years. no, I know that. But I mean, as far as like on the on the scale, which even just a recreational angler yeah. is using, I don't, you know, your I don't bass see boat, that your walleye yeah. boat, that kind of thing. Yeah, there's but there's no barrier to that at all. I mean, that's that's throw a, D, a DC motor on top of your drive shaft and batteries in the bottom of the boat. Yeah, the boat gets heavier, but I don't know. You well, take four hundred pounds off the back wet. and well. Yeah. <laughs>
Yeah, water and water and electricity. You no, no, Andy's right. I'm not. So I'm not just saying. I'm, I'm just saying, Andy. Like, <laughs> yeah. like I just hope that they, they figure that out. I'm not saying your idea. Is, uh, can you imagine though? I agree. Can you imagine having a, a nearly silent Ranger bass boat? You know, three hundred horse. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> on the I back think, and and having yeah. it basically not make much much for noise except prop wash. <laughs> I'd imagine, yeah, I'd, I'd imagine that the, uh, you know, going like a 200 horsepower electric motor system for like a drive system for a boat is going to be pretty expensive though. Like, and not that it's not expensive now, just the yeah, mod, like just having a yeah. motor that can do that gas, however it's, you know, powered up, like it's expensive yeah. to build that. Right. And then at performance levels, it gets yeah. even obviously more costly. Right. Most people's boating habits, too, are not using it daily. So you're going to use your yeah. boat on the weekend, and then maybe you're busy, and you don't use it for a month. So then what does that do to your battery <laughs> yeah. and just sitting there? And, yeah. Well, there's yeah, your yeah, there's your takeout modules, another... right? So you roll up in the Tesla with the boat right. on the back, yeah, right. and you pull the pull the module out, and you stick it after you've parked the boat or the, the car, pull the module out, throw it in the boat, take the boat out for a hot lap, come back, <laughs> put the module yeah. back in the car, and away you go. Boy, we're... <laughs> Okay, just, I we... just figured it all out. <laughs> all right, all right. And I got to bring it up because it's only been mentioned, but it's not been discussed. And I don't. We don't have to get into it. But at the end of the day, I think these EV. I think this move to EV is really going to spur this hybrid design for these vehicles too. And like Jay, yeah. you opened up the conversation. How Canada is basically through. You know. I don't know, communism or something <laughs> mandating these changes. The uh like <laughs> we need these cargo vehicles, at least in the interim, to be hybrid. Like yeah. I've said many times before, I've said it when we weren't even yeah. talking about EV vehicles. If I could get 30, 40, 50 miles in a day in a hybrid mode, I would just be like, oh man, Ecstatic. that'd be so awesome. Yeah. I think that would be just fantastic. Yep. You know, and if you could get a hundred miles, wow! Now, now, wow! Now you've got the best of both worlds, where we've got performance, but we've got you know, the the EV side is it does save money, it does save on emissions when it comes to like the vehicle tailpipe emissions, right? So, yeah, I don't know. It's interesting. Yeah, I think we got to wrap it up though. We're we're almost at fifty minutes. Yeah, and Jay's we're just gotta go to work. Jay's got to go to work. The rest of us, <laughs> we ain't working. We ain't working today. <laughs> Not today. Not today. Uh, we'll see. I'll, I should go to work, I guess. <laughs> Maybe you got to call in uh, yeah. no charge. Call, call in no charge. <laughs> Good. That's Yeah, that's right. And the beauty is by the time the boss hears this podcast, I would have already called in sick and I've been <laughs> yeah. back to work. So it's like it's a like time warp. Yeah. <laughs> you just call uh, in thank after you for- a long Long weekend is undercharged, right? <laughs> <laughs> I there need to recharge. <laughs> Look, I need to recharge. I like that. It's Monday. It's That's right. Going to need a couple of days. <laughs> well, Jason Norman, you go. We can find you as HVACJ. How, what is your actual? It's HVACJ604. Is that what it is? I think it's HVAC underscore J604. Yeah. But you'll find me without whatever. I'm, I'm out the there. You'll see me or you won't. On the I'm socials. Or you will. You spend most of your yeah. time on the Instagram? <laughs> yeah. I'm For for this stuff, yeah, it's all for on this Instagram. Stuff. Yeah. Mm. I, I dabbled, dabbled with Feet Finder. Well, I dabbled what? with <laughs> LinkedIn years ago. No, no. <laughs> I dabbled in LinkedIn years ago and then I kind of just let that account go dead because it's just recruiting people harassing you all the time yeah. for me so yeah. it was just my linkedin annoying. states that i'm very good at knee noises and i have an endorsement for it and mm. uh <laughs> just stupid stuff like that because i just don't think linkedin is <laughs> anyway i digress i always digress though don't i <laughs> all right anything to add to that yep. boys either one of you no nope. no nope, that's it no nope. yeah. i gotta Thanks end for it coming on like short notice too yeah that's right. It is. Solve solve. Modular batteries. Modular batteries <laughs> and business yep. opportunities. That's right. Yeah. If, if you guys, if, if you're listening to this and you don't jump on the idea of like, if you're entrepreneurial and you don't start thinking about how this could actually make you tons of money, then I, you know, look, I tried. I tried. Don't blame me. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Depot charging with car washes, tire change, snacks. Right. We'll give them snacks, dude. Snacks. Beef Hot sticks. Hot breakfast. Beef sticks. Yep. Telling you. All right, guys. Andy, how can yep. they get a hold of us? How can they talk to us Bathroom. about this topic? Well, you could do just like Jay did. You can send us an email at make trades great again at gmail.com. Um, you can Instagram us, DM Eric at mechanical hub and get me at Mick underscore plum. Um, you can and listen Jay to us on eight. basically every single possible thing out there. Yep. You can download this if you want. Maybe multiple, on, maybe you should get it everywhere. We're on feet finder now. We're on feet finder. Yeah. Yeah. We stream there too. Um, <laughs> that's right. Somebody Somebody else. All right. I'm going to hit stop before we hit the actual 15 minute mark, guys. All right. Bye. Thanks, Jay.